That was a close one. Yes, welcome to this week's Movie Math, where Harvey Weinstein's The Butler's Oscar run almost went off script. And what's turning out to be an incredibly crowded awards race with hyperbole already running amok at film festivals as contenders jockey for headlines and buzz, Harvey has been hoping to stand out with some irrefutable box office numbers, underscoring that the butler is a fan favorite, just as The Help did back in 2011, when it not only held on to the number one spot over Labor Day weekend, but surged 36%. But these five hotties almost torpedoed the whole thing. Thankfully, though, while One Direction won the three-day weekend, the butler was still able to lay claim to the four-day holiday weekend and surge a respectable 21%. However, in overall box office, it's lagging substantially behind the help. And as buzz does build for its competitors, even if it's exaggerated buzz, the butler's Oscar hopes are dimming ever so slightly. But don't cry too hard for Harvey. He still has Fruitvale Station, Grace of Monaco, Mandela Long Walk to Freedom, and August Osage County. As for One Direction, just like the movie showed they aren't as artfully orchestrated as Justin Bieber or as artistically brilliant as Michael Jackson, they also couldn't touch either singer's box office numbers. They also fell considerably short of Miley Cyrus' debut back in 2008, which kicked off this current trend of 3D music concerts. But good news is that they didn't embarrass themselves a la Katy Perry or the Jonas Brothers, and can boast they won the three-day weekend. And it's good they're getting these headlines now, considering that This Is Us has been dropping like a rock since it debuted on Friday, meaning it won't be long in theaters. And while One Direction celebrates this high point in their career, I hope at least a few of them are smart enough to realize that it'll now be a race to see who breaks away first to make a run at a solo career. Can any of them realistically follow in JT's footsteps? Or will they just let Simon pick? As for the rest of the box office, there were surges across the board, with We're the Millers and Planes both doing surprisingly well. And it was no surprise that Getaway debuted almost at the very bottom of the top 10. Hopefully that's lesson learned for Ethan Hawke, don't get too cocky just because your buddy Jason Blum hooks you up a few times. And maybe lesson learned for producers as well? Clearly, nobody wants to see Selena Gomez on the big screen. But by far and away, the biggest surprise of the weekend was the Spanish language flick Instructions Not Included, debuting at number four for the three-day weekend and number five for the four-day holiday weekend. Mexico's Eugenio Derbez, a triple threat with the film as co-writer, director, and star, opened in just about 350 theaters, yet pulled off an astounding 28,000 per theater average. In comparison, the UK's closed circuit opened in about 900 theaters and only managed a 3,000 per theater average. Suddenly, industry trades are reminding Hollywood that the Latino audience made up 25% of movie tickets sold last year, yet Hollywood has done little to cater to the demographic. So far, there's really only the Fast and Furious franchise in last year's End of Watch, a surprise hit that starred Michael Pena. Pena also lent his voice to DreamWorks Animation's Turbo, which also tried to reach out to the Latino demographic, only they neglected to mention that in any of their advertising. But after this weekend, expect all the studios to start searching for good Latino scripts, as well as keep an eye on January's Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, a Latino spin-off of the popular horror franchise. As for Derbez, well, it looks like Adam Sandler knew what he was doing when he cast the Mexican TV star in a bit part in Jack and Jill, as well as the sitcom he produced for pal Rob Schneider. Instructions not included will expand to 500 more theaters this coming weekend, and I'll have my own review for you later this week. As for this coming weekend, Vin Diesel has it all to himself. Yet despite also being offered an IMAX, Riddick is only expected to match the debut of The Chronicles of Riddick, which was nine years ago. Damn you, inflation. And that's the weekend box office. I'm Grace Randolph, and we just did some movie math. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope we'll go beyond the trailer for these other top movies.